So I just got back from the theaters seeing Barbarian, which I think has been out for a couple weeks now, but I just had time to go see it. And I don't want to say anything about this movie because I think the less you know going in, the better it's going to be. But holy crap. <laughs> uh... I don't think I've had a movie affect me like that since maybe Hereditary. Like, I got home, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago or so. I'm, like, still jumpy. Like, I, had, I knocked something off the desk and it rolled across the floor. And, like, my skin's just been crawling since watching that movie. It, uh, it got to me. Which is cool. As a jaded horror fan, that doesn't happen a whole lot. So I am thankful when it does, you know? If you do have an opportunity to see it theatrically, I would highly recommend it. Mostly just because of the fact that I think having that level of immersion is helpful with a movie like this. Particularly when it came to, like, the level of darkness in some of the scenes. Like, I know at home, I mean, I will shut off lights to watch a movie or whatever. But it's also like some kind of intruding light from something that either I didn't want to shut off or it's harder to shut off or whatever. This being in a theater, it was pretty damn dark. Thankfully, nobody was like playing on their phone during the movie or any of that crap. And I think having that extra level of darkness really helped immerse me in the film. Ironically, the audience was very, uh, very vocal at this screening. But thankfully, it was in a good way where it was all just like kind of a catharsis of us all experiencing this stuff together in the theater, which I love. It's, you know, half the reason I want to be in a theater. Thankfully, it just didn't cross the line into people being obnoxious. It was people having genuine reactions to what was going on on screen, which was definitely fun. So, yeah, don't want to say much more about this movie. But if you have the opportunity to see it, especially in theaters, I would highly recommend doing so. Beyond seeing the movie, most of what I did today involved running around doing some Halloween hunting. Didn't find anything really of interest. I don't think I bought a damn thing today. From the Halloween stores, at least. I did have two really cool experiences with Party City. The first one I went to is playing Nightcrawler by Judas Priest, which was awesome. And then I went to one a little later in the day, and even more unexpected... They were playing the score to Tenebra, or Tenebrae, Tenebra, I don't know, the Dario Argento film, the Goblin theme. They were playing that in Party City. It made me so happy. Uh, in contrast, all of the goddamn Spirit Halloweens were playing just stupid pop music. And then I went into Books A Million, and they were playing the Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack. So why is Spirit Halloween the one that's lacking in the Halloween music? I remember they used to play, like, just a lot of Halloween kind of music, or at least alternate, like a Halloween song and then a pop song. And I've heard a couple this year playing Halloween-themed songs, but... It's few and far between. But in that Books A Million, I did pick up. Felt weird going through the children's books, but I got the new Goosebumps Slappy Beware. This is supposed to be like the 30th anniversary Goosebumps release, I guess. I was saying myself that I would have preferred a Haunted Mask release, but I think I'm in the minority there. I think most people love Slappy more than they love the Haunted Mask. But this is, I think, all they've done for a Goosebumps 30th anniversary, so I'll take what I can get. And then this was my first opportunity to hang out with my friend Colin after he got back from Crypticon in Minnesota a couple weeks ago. So I had asked him to get me a couple autographs. The first one is Stephen Jeffries from Fright Night, Evil Ed. I think he picked the perfect photo. I asked for this look specifically with an emphasis on like the Raggedy Ann hair if he found a picture like that. So that worked out really well. And then the other one... Bill Johnson, Texas Chainsaw 2, Leatherface. We discussed what for this. I think most of the scenes that he's still in the movie for are the close-ups. So that's what we got. So I wanted to get, I think, Bob Elmore's autograph. I think he's Leatherface in more of the movie than Bill Johnson was, even though I think Johnson was the one credited for most of the film. So hopefully I'll get a chance to get him as well. And uh, slowly building up my Leatherface autographs are a bit of a harder one to get. I think I've said that a couple times in other videos. I am really hoping I can get, uh, what was it, R.A.'s autograph from Texas Chainsaw 3. That's another one I'd really like to get in my collection. So we'll see if that ever happens, but I'm heading in the right direction now at least. But I think that's going to be it for this mini vlog. I will see you all next time. Later.